I think it's been quite some time since I've made a video about Christianity and the Bible. Um, so I was just thinking about something that happened a couple of years ago where I was helping out a young friend of mine with a school project um, where she had to do a talk on a controversial subject. Uh, I won't say who this person is in case she doesn't want me to, but she might be watching. Um, the topic that uh, we chose was why Noah's Ark almost certainly didn't happen. And when we were looking up what to cover, uh, we I ended up, you know, realizing some things that are painfully obvious that I really should have realized as a Christian, but but never did. And um, so I thought I'd just, you know, try to work from memory here and uh, go through what these these points were. Um, there's one major one, and we'll, we'll leave that to the end. Uh, but the first one really is, I guess, that the problem of how do you put an entire global ecosystem on a big boat, if you really think about that. Um, the different habitats that all the different animals need, the different dietary requirements. Think, think of a lion and a tiger. I mean, what is a lion going to eat over 40 days and 40 nights? Uh, the lion wants to eat the other animals. But the other, the other animals have to stay alive because they're they're being preserved for the repopulation of the planet, aren't they? So how does that work? I don't see how it possibly could work. Um, yeah. Then there's the problem of of the particular animals. There would have had to have been polar bears on the ark. So how did they get there? How did they get there from? the Arctic or the Antarctic. How did the kangaroos get there from Australia? Did they have a canoe? How did they get to the Near East from Australia? Or if you want to take the position that prior to the flood, kangaroos were not indigenous to Australia but existed everywhere, if you want to try and argue that, how did they end up being localized only to Australia after the flood? Why are there only kangaroos in Australia? Doesn't make any sense. It doesn't work. So it's not looking good for the flood. But the big one, I think, and I never thought about this, until I was talking about it with my friend. And it's the water. Salt water. Remember, if there's a flood, you're essentially, a global flood, you're turning the entire planet into an ocean. So that's salt water everywhere. Now I want you to think what salt water does to soil. There are certain plants that survive in salt water, but you know what they are. They're the ones that you see on the beach clinging to the rocks. They're very odd looking plants, rubbery, and they're designed especially, where they evolved that way to, to withstand the salt in the sea. But you know, a typical bush or flower or tree even, it's not designed to withstand salt water. Yeah, it could withstand some salt landing on it. You know, if you spray your plants with salt water, it's maybe not going to kill them, right? But when the salt gets into the soil, it destroys the soil. The salt can't get, the, the plant can't get any nutrition from the soil from the water content in the soil. It's going to kill everything. And I've got an article here from the website sciencing.com entitled What Happens When You Put Salt Water on Plants. I will link this article in the description. I want to read maybe just a little bit of it here. Um, 
Here's a section called absorption. When salt water enters the soil, the plant tries to absorb it through its roots like normal water. However, salt water does not allow for osmosis through the plant tissues. It is so dense that the salt solution actually draws water out of the plant, dehydrating and eventually killing it. So, 40 days and 40 nights, the entire planet covered with salt water. Everything's dying. Everything except the people and the animals on the boat. Now apparently, if this Bible story is to be believed, Noah sent out a bird and it eventually came back with a fig leaf in its beak. That did not happen. That can't have happened because all the trees are dead. So, you see, ancient man did not know about science, did not know the effects of salt water. He could concoct a story about the world being covered by water and then he could imagine the water receding and all the trees and the plants still being there. But they wouldn't be. They would be just skeletal. They'd be dead. No leaves. The soil destroyed. The roots unable to gain nutrition from the water because of the, the salt content in the soil. Everything's dead. So imagine the world that Noah would have stepped out onto. Nothing can grow anywhere. There are no plants. There are no seeds. There's nothing. There's nothing to do but die. It really is the end of the world. Not the beginning of a new one. So you see, this isn't complicated. If you believe in the biblical flood, if there's a Christian watching this who believes in the biblical flood, by all means, comment below, make a video response, refute what I'm saying. I don't see how it could possibly have happened.